Mercedes has introduced an innovative design for their front wing, but it seems like this innovation will undergo a massive investigation from the FIA as well as their rivals. But the Silver Arrows are trying to extract as much downforce as possible by improving the airflow from the front wing, so any try from Mercedes is worth the applause. The question is, are they in the clear here? And more importantly, if they are, is this a massive invention that would gain the much needed downforce in order to take the battle up to Red Bull's necks? It's safe to say that Mercedes is looking to come back to winning ways in 2024. And quite frankly, after seeing their car, they might not be that far away from achieving this scenario. The team tried to remain realistic by saying that it's a huge step they have to fill in the upcoming season and they need to be aware that it might not be possible by changing a design and developing it over one winter break period, which may be too optimistic of a view to fight for race wins and potentially a championship. But that didn't prevent Mercedes from making innovations, and the latest one revolves around the front wing of the W15. This is a part from which everything starts. A good airflow from the front wing allows the car to receive clean air through the middle, bottom and rear ends of the car, and this one particular sequence that Mercedes has developed on the fourth main plane of the front wing, it's not technically attached to the nose, but it's connected with it by a discrete wire. The technical regulations state that no main plane should be separated from the nose, or more precisely, all of them should be attached and fixed to this particular part of the front wing due to the prohibition of the creation of the Y250 vortex, something the FIA was quite clear about. There are some other rules as well, such as the main plane having to be visible from above and being movable to a certain extent. Further out, the outboard portion of the upper flap has what is considered a conventional cord. But rather than this flap being run up the side of the inboard metal adjuster, as it would normally happen with a traditional layout, the flap tapers to a raised point, which is similar to how front wing elements were used in the previous regulations to alter the Y250 vortex that was being shed from the main plane juncture below them. Yes, one could make the case that Mercedes are trying to reapply this technology to their front wing, but it's obvious that they know what they're doing. It's kind of illegal, so whether or not this intervention will be perceived as illegal, innovative or a grey area that the team could work with in the future, time will tell. What it has already created is a lot of drama and high expectations from Mercedes because quite frankly, the aerodynamics of the car are what they've been struggling with for quite some time now. But by changing the chassis and the gearbox, the team enabled these mechanical structures to allow them more space to work on different aerodynamic surfaces. And as Wolf said, everything that we're seeing on the car is different from the previous two seasons. This gives us a lot of hope because Mercedes do not have a lot to lose. They've inherited a design that was originally set by the RB19. However, by applying their own iteration of the rules, it's safe to assume that both Russell and Hamilton will have a great season headed into their last campaign as teammates. That is, if their front wing is proclaimed to be legal and they manage to extract a lot of good airflow from it. According to Craig Scarborough, an F1 technical analyst, Mercedes have made quite a bold move here and they're walking on thin ice. But be that as it may, the team has made a lot of progress and that should be noted. When talking about this matter to a greater extent, Scarborough said, I think of all the teams, you can see that Mercedes has made some progress with the car. They've been very open about the problems they've had, so it looks as though, now back under Allison's full control, they seem to be making the right sort of noises and taking the right steps. So fingers crossed for them that we get a more competitive year. One thing that stood out from the real car that we saw in the garage is the front wing. So, if we think back to the regulation changes back in 2022, the new front wings of these cars had to have four elements, and the four elements had to come from the nose out to the end plate. And you couldn't stop one of the elements short. You couldn't have a three element wing in some areas and the four element wings. Yet Scarborough believes that if you take a deeper glance at the middle section of the front wing, there is a slightly spoon shaped version of it. And it does remind him of how the cars looked back in the 2000s. With a little dip to the front, Mercedes is working the middle section of the nose and the front wing quite differently compared to anybody else. But this time, it seems like this iteration of their rules is playing games with the legality of the rulebook. 
unlike the zero pod design that, while being extreme, was something that didn't bring the team anything they hoped for. However, the attention among the rivals of Mercedes has risen, and Helmut Marko has spoken about how some of Red Bull's rivals have the opportunity to explore some very interesting options in different areas of the car and come up with performance that they couldn't have hoped for in the past couple of years. Again, this might also be a trick from Mercedes' side in order to deceive the rest of the grid because Allison has admitted purposefully that the W15 did not have the luxury to work on any massive upgrades because of the cost cap limitations as well as the resources they had available. Adding to this matter to a further extent, Allison said, The new chassis and gearbox were standard for each year, pre-budget cap. The latter usually forces you to choose, but there are teams like us who have opted to change both. There is no doubt that having a new outer casing of the gearbox and at the same time having a new chassis are two big projects that take a part of our financial means. This means that in other parts of the car, we've not pushed as much development. Well, it's going to be quite interesting to see whether or not Mercedes have found this grey area on their car to be legal, because if it turns out that they can reintroduce the benefits of the Y250 Vortex, improving the aerodynamic efficiency across the car's underbody, then it's safe to assume that not just the FIA, but the entire grid would be on their backs trying to either ban it or implement it on their own cars. This is quite important for the upcoming two seasons, because of the car that the 2024 season will see will be practically the one that the teams will participate in in 2025, with some small changes as well, because most of the focus would already be on the 2026 season and the new regulations in which Mercedes are tipped to have an extremely good chance of getting back on top. But even with this regulation, we must address the elephant in the room, which is Hamilton leaving Mercedes from the 2025 season onwards. And if you look at the decision's nature, which derives from the fact that the seven-time world champion didn't even test the car in the first place before making his decision, it goes to show that there is little to no trust that Mercedes could actually invent something in the following period to give Hamilton the championship-winning machinery. On the other hand, he was also very much against signing Russell as his teammate from 2022 onwards, because if the team comes up with this type of car, it's safe to assume that Russell won't be the next Bottas, and that's why we have to pay a lot of attention to the 2024 season and see how these inventions of Mercedes will suit both of their drivers. With this in mind, one couldn't help but give kudos to Mercedes for redesigning the front wing, changing the nose as well, and trying to gain a competitive edge on their rivals. However, McLaren's development curve has not slowed one single bit from 2023 onwards, and it seems like the MCL38 is one of the biggest challenges that Red Bull should expect in the following period. So, with this in mind, what do you think about Mercedes' front wing design? Do you think it will eventually get banned? And if not, do you think that the rest of the grid will implement this trick in order to gain an advantage over their own competitors? Let us know in the comments down below.